It's been a long time since we've had a comet this bright. 23 years to be exact. Up to now it's probably the most photographed comet ever. And it continues to amaze people all around the world. Let me tell you everything you need to know about Comet Neowise. Starting at number 1, the discovery. On the 27th of March, a new comet was detected by the Near Earth Object Widefield Infrared Survey Explorer, Neowise. At that time it had a magnitude of 18, pretty dark, and was two astronomical units, two times the Earth-Sun distance, away from the Sun. Its perihelion, the closest approach to the Sun, happened on July 3rd with 0.29 AU distance. That's closer than Mercury. If you want to see it when it comes around again, you will have to wait for another 6000 years. The closest approach to Earth will happen three days after this video, on July 23rd. Next up, its trajectory. There are countless maps and charts out there, but some of them are pretty hard to read. It became visible to the naked eye close to Capella, low above the horizon in the northern hemisphere. Now it traveled all the way across the meridian and is now visible below the Big Dipper. I will leave some easy to understand maps and tracking websites down below. But the best way to find it is to download Stellarium, where the comet is finally in the catalog. But let's take a closer look at this comet. Most comets are made out of ice and dust. Some of them are made of rock rubble and some of them are made of mostly iron. As soon as a comet approaches the sun, the strong solar winds start tearing it apart, creating a debris tail. For Neowise, this tail is now visible to the naked eye in dark locations. It spans about 6 degrees of night sky. At its maximum brightness, this tail was visible from city skies, which is insanely bright. But if you have some better equipment and know how to track a comet, you will see another tail in your image. A very faint light blue tail facing off into another direction. This tail is called the ion tail and is caused by the magnetic field of the sun. A stream of ionized particles is being pulled away from the comet and shining blue as the ions leave their energized state. This tail is facing off into a slightly different angle because the magnetic field of the sun is not even and can vary a lot from region to region and from day to day. You want to photograph the ion tail? Let's get to the fun part. You don't have much time, the comet already faded significantly. A DSLR and tripod is absolute minimum if you want to see a sharp and crisp debris tail. A good focal length is about 300 mm. If you don't have a star tracker, exposures of about 1 second will be maximum. Crank up the ISO to see anything. But this ion tail, how do we get that in the image? First you will need dark skies. I was not able to photograph the ion tail and I live in a bottle 5 zone. Get out of the city early in the night or early in the morning and search for a dark place with a clear view of the northern sky. Second, a star tracker is a must. I've seen a lot of great images between 15 and 60 seconds exposure time, at focal lengths passing 300 mm. But if you have dark skies, a basic DSLR, 300 mm lens and star tracker, this will be amazing. And third, if you want to photograph faint details in astronomical objects, Take many exposures of this target and stack them together in software. It's a basic procedure in astrophotography. Get into an editing software like Photoshop or any other and an amazing image will be in your hands. I imaged the comet about two weeks ago with my Canon 6D Mark II, a Tamron 300mm lens and a small mechanical star tracker. Did I drive a long way to photograph the comet? No. For the location let's look to my outdoor correspondent Tim. Thanks Tim, we are on location, looking over a beautiful small city, surrounded by some... plants. Behind me you can see our northwestern view. Let's take a look. We see a more or less good... We see a more or less good low horizon, that will make a 5 out of 10 on the great foreground scale. As we have been on this location a few nights ago, we have some footage left, of an amateur photographer and YouTuber who was here in that same night. Let's take a look. Well, it's in the middle of the night. You can see the moon over there, at Mars, right above it. The beautiful skyline of Frankfurt. And if you hear this sound right now, you know what's happening. Alright, you can see the DSLR. I have the Canon ES60 Mark II on the solid tripod. And it's being tracked by the Omegon Mini Track. And a wonderful portable tracker. 
And I just realized that I haven't even focused correctly. I need to do that. Basically, I'm in the middle of the field. I can hear the street with a view over my beautiful hometown. I can see a Riga and I can barely see it. Right now, the comet has a brightness of the star of the bottom left of Capella and I can barely see a tail, but I can see it. It's amazing. The cap I'm now making 15 second exposures on the small star tracker and I can hear it tracking perfectly at 300 millimeters, which is great. So now I will stay here all night. It's now almost 4 a.m. I can see the sky turning red and the horizon and blue above it. The comet is still visible and it's amazing. I think one more hour and then I can finally... Oh look, a moon! Sleep again. Well, it's slightly overexposed. Well, it's almost daylight now. Well, at least the astrophotographer says that it's almost daylight because most of the stars are gone. I can only see the bright ones. Polaris is almost gone. Venus in the back there. And the comet is now almost gone. I can barely find it again. Where is it? I think it's... It just vanished out of view. This concludes our report for the day. On a hill surrounded by some... plants. Back to you, Tim. Thanks, Tim. I really recommend to try and photograph, or at least take a look at the comet, before it's fading out of view. It's an experience everybody should make at least once. I will now end this video with my two favorite images of Neo Wise, taken in that exact night, on that exact hill where that makeshift YouTuber was standing. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing. I make videos about my journey through astro photography and help others starting out. Because my name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies, and may the night be with us.